the automatic firearm, one of the most dangerous and lethal weapons known to man. They have been used for decades all over the world, sometimes for good and sometimes for evil. Regardless of what they have been used for, their accomplishments are anything but small. In the relatively short time that they have existed, they have completely revolutionized warfare and changed the world forever. To learn more about automatic firearms, I interviewed an expert on the subject. Uh, my name is James Lawler. Uh, I'm 45 years old. Uh, I've spent 22 years in the Army. Uh, I enlisted in right after the first Gulf War in February 22, 1991. So, how does an automatic firearm work? Okay, it's real simple. There's two types of systems that are basically used today. One is the gas operated, which we use, okay, and what that is is when you fire the weapon, uh, the, when you hit the back of the, uh, the bullet, you'll see that there's a little, you know, cap, all mm -hmm. right? That cap ex explodes the gunpowder, which propels the, the little metal projectile out the front of the barrel. but with the force of that going forward, it creates gas, tubular gas, all right? The gas comes back around and actually hits a cam where it ejects the round, okay? So that's gas operated. Um, the other way is a cam operated, which basically is for belt-fed um, firearms. So now that we know how they work, let's go into the history of the automatic firearm. The first truly automatic firearm was the Maxim gun, invented by Dr. Hero Maxim. The Maxim gun was the first of its kind. It was the first ever self-powered firearm. It used the momentum of a fired round to eject the previous cartridge and load the next round into the barrel. This process would repeat itself until the user released the trigger or the gun ran out of ammo. Over the next few decades, several large automatic firearms similar to the Maxim gun would be invented and mass-produced. Some examples are the Vickers gun and the Type 92. The large majority of these firearms required a crew of four to six people that would continuously operate, maintain, reload, and fire the gun. By World War II, technology had advanced in such a way that automatic firearms were now portable and could be operated and fired by a single rifleman. Some examples of these new, portable automatic firearms would be the French Hotchkiss model or the U.S. Johnson model. Along with these inventions also came the submachine gun. It's essentially an automatic firearm that is smaller and more portable. Some examples would be the U.S. Thompson model or the German MP40. Even after the end of World War II, firearm technology continued to evolve. After World War II, many iconic automatic firearms had been designed and invented, like the AK-47 and the M16. The AK-47 was designed by Mikhail Kalashnikov. After being wounded in battle, he was sent to a hospital, where he heard several soldiers complaining about the state of Soviet rifles. This inspired him to design and create a completely new automatic rifle. He began his work in the last year of World War II and finished in 1947. Ever since then, it has been considered one of the most dependable and best designed automatic rifles ever made. For the past 60 years, its only real competition was the M16 rifle. It was originally called the AR-15 and was owned by a company by the name of Armalite. In 1959, the design for the AR-15 was bought by a company called Colt and was renamed the M16. These weapons were first mainly used during the Vietnam War, and they are still used today. Speaking of today, let's talk more about modern automatic firearms. So, what kind of weapons are used today? When I was deployed in Iraq, I carried a semi-automatic M16 with a... M203 grenade launcher. The M16A1 when I came in, now the M16A2, which is a, a multiple fire uh, weapon. We also fire the M249, um, which is a uh, gas-operated, air-cooled automatic weapon that fires in the open bolt position. Um, I've also fired the 240 Bravo, which is the same thing basically as the 249. 
The difference there is, is that it's a fully automatic weapon and it fires a 7.62 round versus a 5.56. It's kind of like the difference between an M16 and an AK-47. just fires a different round. But automatic firearms aren't only for warfare. In 1976, a man by the name of Charles Gearhart had an idea. He wanted a game where he and his friends could shoot at each other, yet remain safe. Using paint markers originally intended for use on trees and livestock, they created the first game of paintball. Since its creation, it has become widely popular and recognized as a true sport. Professional leagues started popping up, and some were even featured on television. We've seen how the automatic firearm has changed and evolved over the course of history and become more than just a weapon on the battlefield, but equipment in sport. I believe that automatic firearms will continue to evolve along with the sports that have come with it. Thank you for watching my National History Day documentary.